بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى has sent us for a purpose on earth for a temporary period we need to make sure we utilize the potential our time our energy our resources so that when we go in the قبر we are prepared for the real life Deception and Dhoka is the way which will convince a person to do otherwise. When a person falls in the trap of deception, then he does otherwise. Isa alayhi salam advising his Hawariyin said, Ya ma'ashar al-Hawariyin, irdaw bidani al-dunya ma'asalamat al-din, that be satisfied that dunya which is despicable, which is vile, which is base, which is valueless, suffice what you need for dunya only, but make sure you protect your deen, make sure you preserve your deen, make sure you prioritize akhirat, where dunya is primary and your dunya does not remain your primary focus, but deen is your primary focus and dunya is secondary. Kama radhiya ahlul dunya bidani al-deen ma'a salamati dunya Like how the people of the world are happy that their dunya will not be harmed, but deen are harmed, means they are not worried about deen, but they're worried about dunya. So you should be worried about your deen. Don't compromise your deen. You can compromise dunya. You cannot compromise deen. Like Mona Farooq, Saab once was given a dawat and they fed him fish. And then after the fish was consumed, the bones were distributed to the cats. So he said, this is what you have done to your deen. So they didn't understand. He said, Molina explain to us. He said, the leftovers were given to the animals to consume. The primary was consumed by us. That is what you are doing with your deen. Your primary youth, the time in your life where you've got the most energy, the most resources, the most of everything, you've made it work for dunya. Then when you are old and you've got no energy and your bones are broken, the leftovers of your life, you give it to Allah. He said, secondly, the prime of your day, the prime time in your 24 hours, you give it work for dunya. And whatever little but left over you have, you utilize it for deen. So that's what Hazrat Isa salatu was was advising his Hawariyin. Nabi Alayhi Salaam said, La ta'tiyannakum ba'di dunya ta'kulu imanukum kama ta'kulu nar al-hatab. Don't get caught in the strap of dunya, for a time will come after me. This dunya will consume, devour, feast on you. Like how wood is consumed by fire. It completely annihilates and devastates. There's no trace left of that wood. If you allow dunya leeway, it will consume you. So we are told, follow the Nabi of Allah. So this word follow, very interesting. When a person goes hunting and he shoots the animal, but it does not die. Then they trace the animal, they follow the injured animal. So they look at the traces of blood and they try to trace it. If the tracker goes the wrong route and he's tracking, means every step of that animal you have to follow. If you're not a good tracker and you lose the track, then you lose the animal. Likewise, ittabi'u, follow Nabi alayhi salatu wassalam, ati'u Allah, 
wa atiyu rasul follow allah and follow his nabi so if we are expert trackers and we follow the commands of allah and the sunnah of janabe rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam 100% then we will reach our destination in our target many people lose the track on route so a person should understand allah has sent us for a purpose and an object in this world and that's where our accountability lies i met one accountant and you are saying that what bothers him most is when he tries to balance his balance sheet trial balance his books and he doesn't balance he says when he goes to sleep he's trying to think of the problem and find the solution when he wakes up he's thinking about that when he's eating he's thinking about that he says until his books don't balance he won't rest if an ordinary human being who's ordered in books of another human being is restless about those books not being balanced because of the system of the people of the world because the saz audit and the auditors will be particular can you imagine how restless the people of iman should be when allah rabbul alamin is going to audit us and if our books are not balancing if i'm not reading salat with jamaat in the masjid takbir ula saf ula five times a day 365 days of the year and i'm not restless then i should be worried if i'm not making tilawat of quran with tajweed punctually daily then i need to be worried if i'm not following every sunnah particularly and giving priority to that and my books are not balancing then i need to be worried if i do not know the masail of deen and my books don't balance i need to be worried if my tongue is not engaged in the dhikr and the remembrance of allah my books don't balance i need to be worried if my desire is not to see the deen of allah come alive in the world on the day of qiyama my books don't balance i need to get worried what has made us lose sleep and what are we losing sleep for if it's a risk then risk is written what a deception a risk maqsum wa ma min dabbatin fil ardi illa ala allah rizquha allah has taken the responsibility for every creation on earth that moves to fulfill the needs of their sustenance how can it be that as insan is still restless about that thing which allah has taken responsibility and that thing which he hasn't taken responsibility for which is hidayat and guidance and protection in qabr and akhirat it is based on our amal it is based on our good deeds we are not restless about that one person from saudi who used to strive in the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day inherited some funds he decided to invest it as he was traveling he seen a board auction he decided i'll be present the day of the auction came he went to the auction and they were bidding this his inheritance was 17 1000 riyals which was a small meager amount it was excess for him bidding started at 5 then 6 he got needed bidding 13 as the bidder now in their language going for 14 going for 14 anybody to rate more anybody for more anybody for more he left at his hands up 15 15 15 going once going twice somebody else bidded 16 20 16 16 16 anybody for more 
Nobody raised their hands and one person thought, this is my last bud, 16. Any bud, 16. Anybody for 16 going once and this person said, might as well, I've got 17. Let, it, let me throw in the towel at 17. Going once, going twice, sold. Documentation was prepared. And he went out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People are trying to get hold of him, couldn't get hold of him. Eventually, the message got to him, somebody senior need to see him. So anyway, they tracked him where he was in the path of Allah. That person came to see him. So he said, I'm in the path of Allah. If it's anything of worldly matters, I can't discuss it with you. So he said, I'm not going to take much time. Just hear me out. So he said, okay, fine. He asked Amisa for permission. Amisa said, fine. If it's something important and serious, tend to the matter. So this person said that we are oil prospecting company. We own the plot next to yours, which you just bought. We are interested in purchasing it. So the person said, okay, no problem. If you want to buy it, buy it. So how much are you offering? He said, 25. He said, okay, done, deal. So this person said, I'm very shocked. You're the first person I've met where you agree to the figure. You're not even debating. He said, it's not important for me. I'm in the path of Allah. I'm doing Allah's work. This is my priority. So he said, you know what? I've been hired. I'm, I'm an expert. I've studied psychology. I've studied various fields. I'm an expert negotiator. I've been sent to give you the lowest figure. My, my job is to extort maximum. But seeing that you like this, I'm going to increase the figure. He said, no, I don't even need to increase. He said, you know what? I've been given a cap of 30. Maximum, I can go to 30. I'm going to give you 30. I've never met anybody like you. So he said, no problem. He took the details, fine. Signed the documentation. And he said, I will send you a check. So anyway, he forgot about it. Then when he was at home, the registered post came in and there was a check and he had to sign for it and he opened up the envelope and when he seen the check he got a shock of his life it was for 30 million rials when he was budding he thought so the amount was 4,000 he thought the amount was 4,000 in actual fact it was 4 million rials so he went out with 17,000 rials he came back with 30 million rials, without any work, without any effort. When you do the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives risk without any hisab kitab, without any accountability. And that's the dunya. We should not get caught. The doka and the deception of dunya is it corns a person to believe that what they're doing and the effort that they're doing will be fruitful when actually it will be a complete waste. They say that a tourist came to an upmarket hotel and he stayed there for the night. The next day, he phoned the room service and he said, I want three overdone fried eggs that are hard as a rock, toast that is burnt to the cinder and a cup of black coffee that tastes like mud. So the person on the other line said, Sorry, sir. This is room service. We don't serve a breakfast like that. So he replied, Well, you did that yesterday. You did that yesterday. So dunya is not as it seems. Dunya is not as it seems. It's a doka upon doka upon doka. Deception upon deception upon deception. A person check into a hotel, uh, a, a one-star hotel, the room was for $18 a night. So he wanted to negotiate. So he asked the manager that, can you give me a, a better rate? So he said, sure, I'll have it at $9, but you need to make your own bed. You need to make your own bed. He said, done deal. I'll make my own bed. So the manager pointed to one side and said, there's the nails and wood. There's the nails and wood. He thought so he was getting a good deal. 
It was the other way around. It was the other way around. A newly married couple who went to an upmarket hotel in Washington, D.C. So the bride was worried that the hotel was bugged. So she told the husband that he must do a sweep and search to see if there was anything hidden. So he looked behind the curtains, he looked in the drawers, he ransacked the entire apartment, hotel room, and under the rug, he found something. It was something like a mysterious disc, it had screws on it. So he thought, so this is too advanced for me, let me get rid of this. Probably this is a strange device and gadget. So he had a Swiss knife and he undid all the screws and threw the dust out of the window. He threw the dust out of the window. So the next morning as they were checking out, the manager asked him, how was your stay? How was the room? How was the service? How did you feel staying in our hotel, an upmarket plush hotel? So the groom now was worried. He said, why so many questions? Why? So many questions. They're probably watching people here. So he said, no, 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 nothing to be concerned about, sir. The room under you had a complaint yesterday that the chandelier fell on them. They had a complaint that the chandelier fell on them. Sometimes you think so, you're doing good. And you got it under control. And you got the formula. And you got the move. And you got the groove. And you got the tune, and you got the lingo, and you got it right, but actually you got it completely wrong. You got it completely wrong. That's dunya and the deception of dunya. Husband took his wife for deer hunting. This was the first time she was going. So he told her the most important thing is to claim your kill immediately. Claim your kill immediately. So before anybody else gets to it, you claim it. So they went to the hunting boxes, they waited for the deer. The husband was busy with his own work when the wife's gun went off. So she, following her husband's instruction, ran to claim her stake. And the husband followed afterwards and found that she was in an argument with somebody else. So the wife was saying, this is my kill, this is my kill. I can prove that I shot the animal. The deer is mine. So the man said, when he seen the husband, he said, okay, lady. He knew he's not going to win. She's not going to back down. She said, do you mind if I take my saddle off your deer before you take it away? Do you mind I take my saddle off your deer before you take it away? She shot the Bichara's uh, horse. She didn't even know it was a horse. So Dunya is like that. Even the people of Dunya, we put our trust in the people of Dunya and we forget putting our trust in Allah. The people of dunya will do you down. Allah, even after you do Allah down, Allah will support you. Two people went out hunting and uh, it so happened that they dropped their guns by a cliff. So as they turned around, they saw a, a bear making, running towards them. So they climbed up a tree and the bear started following them up the tree. So as they were perched on the branch, the first person took out his knapsack and was swapping his hiking boots for trainers. So the other person shrieked and screamed, when the bear gets close to us, we'll jump and make a run for it. So the person said, are you, are you insane? You can never outrun a bear. Are you insane? You can never outrun a bear. He said, I don't need to outrun, outrun the bear. I only need to outrun you. I don't need to outrun the bear. I only need to outrun you. So best friends, when they are needed, they will be far away and disappear. Tamil for today is to help another Muslim brother. Man kana fi hajati akhi, kana Allah fi hajati. Allah will help you fulfill your needs and necessities. If you feel full the needs of a Muslim brother, on Faraja and Muslim in Qurbatan, and if you remove the difficulties of a brother, his distress, his grief, Allah will remove your grief and Allah will conceal your faults.
وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين